Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pete the Carrot Man Clark with me in the Carrot Poker Studios. This is Sam, the Lamb Stock Mix. What's up, Sam? Yeah, man, it's so good. You alright? I am doing well, yeah. I'm gonna play 200 Zoom this morning, so this pool is gonna be tough. I think yep. there are how many people do we have in the pool? 53 people in the pool. Three. So, yeah, three people. Me and the, the two best players in the world. Fun. So yeah, we'll jump into the pool and see what what goes on. Uh, good morning, everyone. As well, good morning, chat. Yeah, hey, chat. What's up? Let's see if I can get uh, chat on my screen. Yeah, a bit of chat. I've got everything wrong here. I OBS setups all wrong and stuff. I'm gonna set out after these hands and actually fix them. Okay, so what have we got? A bunch of stuff going on. Um, let's go for a small bet and a small bet. So at the Carrot Poker Store on CarrotCorner.com, we sell ranges um, for all of the different stakes. So we sell ones that are sensitive to 25 NL rake, we sell ones that are sensitive to 100 NL rake, and we sell ones that are sensitive to 500 NL rake. And they're also close enough to the stake next to them that we call them like 50 to 100 ranges or 200 to 500 ranges. Ranges are not going to make you beat the game if you don't already, you know, probably. I mean, they might sort out some of your preflog leaks. It's not impossible that they that they could do that. Um, but what they're really mainly going to do is they're going to turn you into someone that understands preflog and then you can sort of deviate as you see fit from there. You get into a lot less tricky situations post. Yeah, if your preflop game is better, you have a better feel for for what's going on and you can kind of see what hands are close, like where EV is close, where it's less close, that sort of thing. So Queen 7-5 against this position, when I'm big blind, I think I do want to be a little bit more cautious as big blind here than I would be a small blind. Um, and that's just because, get over a bit here, and that's just because in the big blind my range is a lot more polarised and I am running a lot more absolute air balls like king six suited at some frequency or ace four or something like that in the small blind you know i'd be a bit more linear i might still have ace four but i'd be i'd be a bit more linear now on this turn with the ace of hearts in our hand the question is like do we sort of bluff protection-y bet here sometimes and i think the answer is it's probably not horrible but usually this hand is a check that said, in these positions, our hand has a lot less showdown value than it would in in later positions. So actually bluffing with this hand is definitely a bluff, not a value bet. If we're betting, it's probably totally fine. Ace of Hearts blocker here is not fantastic against his blocking his bluffing range. And the King of Spades is going to block a few bluffs as well, like King Jack, King Ten of Spades. So easy fold. But yeah, I think we can, we can probably lead that turn at some frequency. And we can just sort of say, okay, I'm more polo than you. Like on the flop, I played a... I, I protected my checking range, I have some overpairs here, they want to bet big. And just play a big bet or or check strategy. One fear I maybe have, Sam, is that humans might not mix enough fold with pocket pair when, they be, when they're made indifferent on that turn, just because flop check through. That's one idea I have, I don't know how right it is, but... Um, range Jam says, why are you always running out of time bank? so true because Better the time bank is really really short and i'm tired because i just got up but i didn't want to because the blackout blinds are not woken up yet and i'm trying to talk at the same time so i'm just and i'm getting old all of those reasons it is funny though it's literally like you open a table and then you're, like your first hand you've got three seconds i know it's crazy like i remember you used to get like a nice courtesy like 25 seconds just to begin with and now it's like no you, you won't get that um, so because this guy's short stacked and is appearing as a weaker player, I don't want to call this with fours. I don't think this is like a horrific call. I think this is actually quite a nice call in GTO because it's kind of only blocking bluffs that people lead on the turn a lot anyway. So he's not really likely to get to the river there with like the kind of guttery hands that, that like the spade draw hands with the four in them if they're going to lead turn like almost pure. So I actually like having spades on that node when he doesn't bet turn. It's kind of interesting, right? Normally we associate having spades as being, having the suit that busted as being a bad thing, but there I don't mm. think it's necessarily the case. It's obviously a lot better when it's been passively played to have that hand. This guy limped, right? 
Right. Yeah. So limps pre and we get a flop with 954 and yeah, I mean Queen 9 in these positions, I don't really remember if this gets into the range. I think it doesn't. I could be wrong, maybe it's a mix. I think there's a sliver. A sliver of 3-bet, yeah. So... I'm gonna look up. So 5s here, I think we should just be totally indifferent in these spots. I think if we're earlier position, it's the kind of spot where we really favour 5s to the other pairs. The problem in these positions is that he does 3-bet like 7s and 8s and stuff, so I think this is therefore just a mix, and I roll a bit low, so I'm gonna fold this time. So it's interesting that in these spots, and again with 7s, I think a mix, and I roll a 15, so I will fold. In these spots with pocket pairs, the, the low, low pocket pairs actually get really kind of nicer. They get plus EV to defend if you're under the gun, but they can be like more break even if you're like cut off. So when, you, when you're on the cut off, right, you get 3-bet by the small blind chat. What happens is that your opponent is in this like nasty sweet spot for you, where for, or for him where he has like sevens, eights, and nines, like enough that your fives are kind of suffering a little bit. When you're under the gun, he doesn't have sevens and eights, like really at all, he has like some nines, and then your fives are like really good because they're like set mining and not dominated by all of these over pairs. So when you get like low flops, you're not gonna get set over set it, etc. And when you are, finally, when you are blind versus blind or button versus big blind or something, your opponent's range is just weak enough that you defend a hand like five to three bet just because it's a strong enough hand in absolute terms, like not even caring about like set over set domination or pocket pair domination or whatever. So Ace King off obviously really standard jam. Let me get four bet here. Let's run it. We get the snap. Okay. Snap by Ace King suited. Four spades, please. Good. Bring them on. A few limpers, few recreationals as well though, so all balances out. And Jane. And JLU. Enough said. And Tom at some point, no doubt. Yeah, Tom will jump in and just start triple check raising. You'll like see him and have like 700 bigs at one point. So, in this situation when he just pots flop, like we're already in a scenario where we need to be pretty careful. If we start calling down here with 10s, the problem is that our hand is not robust, so if Ellen's bluffing, he has quite a bit of equity here, usually, and we're very dead against the top pair plus region, and we are very likely to face a second bet here. So I'm going to fold this flop because if I call flop, the frequency with which I face a second barrel after someone donks pot on the flop is very high and therefore my equity, although enough to call percentage-wise, is like really unrealizable. And the EV I actually get by calling, therefore, is going to be like a lot lower than... Like you can express EV as a percentage of the pot as well, like your expected value. And when you think that your EV is going to be a lot lower than your equity, um, you might have to fold like some some bad redraw kind of medium strength hands that are just made and praying to get to showdown because they're just not going to realize equity or they don't want to like call down with tens and then you're going to face a barrel a bit too often so you just kind of have to accept that you're in that spot where your hand has very poor realizability for the situation. So if we face small c bet here, um, the question is like where does this hand fit in? I roll a 43, I'm going to call on a 43. I do want to do quite a bit of raising on this board if he is betting range here, which people do. This hand, it, I can see some gains by raising. I, I, I do think it's like a little bit too good of a call to, to ever be raising though. I think it's just a very, very good call. Problem fucking gone on boys. Let's not speak too soon Sam, we have like the worst flush possible. Now. I mean, he can't. Got, we we block the four three of clubs here, right? And just playing our hand class on the river, like unblocking every combo of a queen and stuff. I think over bet here is going to be the the correct play. Back ten as well. Good yep. So our range a little bit starved of bluffs. We do still have some though, like six five, six seven, ten seven sort of thing, random ace high things. We need to make sure we bluff quite a bit there though. Like we bluff everything obviously that's remotely low in showdown value so even if we get there with some pairs or ace x combos even if they win occasionally by checking we still shouldn't check them right how are you finding the carrot poker school grade one sir uh yeah I'm, I'm absolutely loving it i i so it's lecture nine tomorrow and i'm gonna be sad when it's over because there's only two left you can always take grade two yeah no i i know i absolutely will but um yeah 
everyone's really nice in the class and it's just it's, it's just so much fun um i put a message in the group the other day because i couldn't attend last week mm-hmm. but um when i was watching it back on my own and there was like quizzes in it and stuff i was just mm-hmm. like shouting at my screen <laughs> i was pausing it every time and shouting at it and so I think bottom set is the sort of hand that does just want to bet again, like I'm blocking both the nine and the king. I don't think this hand does much slow playing. There are definitely some hands in our range here that do a lot of slow playing on the turn here, and we do need to make sure that we mix quite a bit of check into our strategy on these sorts of nodes. And what we want to do here is play, on this table, is play like a mixed polarised strategy where we're betting a polarised range, but we're also slow playing some of those really good hands. What we want to do is stack king-jack. He's like, oh, I've got jack, I'm blocking blocking his bluffs though, can I make this fold? I mean, folding King Jack on this turn is definitely too premature, button versus small blind. More likely villain is kind of, you know, he's, he's also got a lot of hands there that I expect to check back at a really high frequency instead of bluff. So like sevens, eights, like I don't know what these hands are meant to do in equilibrium, like I wouldn't be shocked if, probably they're meant to check, but I wouldn't be shocked if like they're meant to bluff sometimes. Probably not, or protection bluff sometimes. Sometimes when you're betting the turn, and you have a very vulnerable hand that's folding out, you know, air, but when it folds out air, it's quite useful. But then at the same time, when you're betting your opponent's also folding quite a lot better hands, you know, you can actually make what's called a protection bluff or a denial bluff, where you're betting for a few reasons. Sam, would you like to teach the chat about the betting sink? A little snippet from the Carrot Poker School Grade 1, Lecture 6. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, one second. Uh, mm-hmm. You get your lecture notes up here. Um, <laughs> but there are three reasons we bet. Value, proof, and uh, denial. Um, we should stipulate though that denial is not really like as primary as yeah. the other two, right? You imagine a sink and then um, your reasons for betting, i.e. value buff or denial, are, are like water coming from a tap. The more reasons you have, the, the higher the sink will fill. And then you have like two lines. One is like you can bet, which is lower than you must bet. And obviously the more reasons you have for betting uh, said hand, uh, the more the sink will fill up and the more uh, urgency there is, so to speak, to, to, to make it a must bet. But yeah, denial is um, a smaller tap. Uh, it's less of a reason to bet versus value in buffing because it just doesn't affect EV as much. And we were saying, weren't we, that, or you, you were explaining that protection is very much, um, for want of a better word, overvalued in terms of reasoning. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with value betting. Um, people think like, oh, I must protect my hand. That yeah. is reason. I'm yeah. saying but it's, it's really not. It doesn't, it, it sort of pales compared to whether you're bluffing or whether you're value betting. Yep, and a lot of this comes down to the reasoning, as like the the semantics, the way you formulate the sentence as well. Mm-hmm. Because if you say something like, "We need protection here," you're kind of mm-hmm. teaching yourself that. So hold on, this is a very polar spot here for villains' range. Like his hand here is likely to be very good or very bad. He can have a little bit of queen x as well. My first question is, what strategy do I want to play here? Do I want like some small bets and stuff like that? And I think the answer to that is I'm just betting mostly ace x plus for value and I probably don't. So I'm going to play a big bet or check strategy. And we will big bet here. There's some weaker ace x that can call, queen x that can call, flush draws that can call, which is like the why we have a good amount of equity after we bet and then get called. But we could also check again at some frequency. I am blocking villain's bluffing range though by having a king, so when I have that I would describe my hand as having the kind of blockers that make it a bit more likely that turn is going to go check check. And when that's the case, getting a bit of denial from an under pair or, or whatever, or second what, pair, or what getting was some the value pre? Is fine. I three bet three? Um, small blind against cutoff there. Okay, the pot seemed very small in the turn. I checked the flop on ace okay. three do, so I should be playing a mixed polarized strategy on that board. I have a lot. What people need to understand about a flop like ace three deuce is that I have a lot of mediocre hands in my range, right? Any ace high board when I'm a pre-flop three better, while it will create some very strong hands in my range, it will also create some very bad hands in my range as well. Um, I think mix, I think three bet this time on a 66. Pretty good board for my range. I can use big bet or check here. I can have a relatively high betting frequency. I will check this hand occasionally. It's one of the more vulnerable 10x. On a 28, I think I can probably check this holding, but I think bet's also fine. Again, small bet, I probably just want to pure call this combo and mix raise with ace-10, king-10 plus and bluffs. 
The ace turn is really good for my range and really bad for villains. I'd expect this to go check check at a very high frequency because after we check all flop, a lot of his ace would have checked behind on the flop. So when he makes this bet, he's repping an incredibly polarized range actually. When we have this hand, I think we do a really good job of unblocking most bluffs, which at this point are Broadway hands and hearts or stuff with one heart. Therefore, I am going to do some calling here. We have a lot of ace, king, ace, queen, etc. I think this hand probably becomes a pure fold on the river. And I, th I think, and I think the reason it becomes a pure fold is that we just, hmm. Maybe this is indifferent, actually. We have a lot of ace-x on this node, though. Like, ace-x is a very, very common thing to get to the spot, and it's undoubtedly a much better call than 10x. Roll a 26, I think it's certainly a fold on a 26, but... Oh, I really wanted to call that, I really wanted to call... You think it might be over bluffed? Like, it's a little bit hard to have enough value combos, it's a bit easy to lose control of bluff frequency, perhaps. I think there's arguments along that, that vein. Yeah, blocking blocking 10s, and we didn't... Oh yeah, so like, how often is he betting ace-x on the flop? Unless he has ace-x or hearts. Not that often, sometimes if he knows what he's doing he should be mixing a bit of bet with these hands, like he should be mixing small bet with quite a lot of different combos on that flop, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, but yeah, his value range is certainly like not huge there, this pocket 6s, probably full frequency, yeah. pocket 10s, full is frequency. Great. The 4 is a great card, but it's also one that like a strong player will understand that they don't get to bluff very often, like I don't think that's an appealing spot to bluff for a human, because yeah. so while the combos point towards bluffs, I think most people are going to be like, okay, in character's range, there's like tons of ace-king kind of combos, like that sort of thing. There's just a lot of hands like that um, that don't look like they should ever fold. And, you know, he's got a lot of heart-heart that's just not going to bluff. So the bluffs actually aren't that abundant. Like, no one's going to bluff at these stakes, like king-queen of hearts there, right? So probably villain has mostly queen-jack, seven-eight suited, you know, King Jack of spades, hands like this that he's bluffing, that he doesn't always bet on the turn. So I don't actually think this is as juicy as it looks. I feel like we won't face that shove very often. So even though it's, there's not that many value combos, there's also not that many bluffs either. And I don't have a good enough feeling there, strong enough feeling there to, to deviate. Do not be bluffing at hat like a you know like a low heart hand like eight seven or something Possibly, like that. Possibly, yeah. I mean that that doesn't appear to block my folding range, right? Because I don't really get there with the eight of hearts or the seven of hearts. So yeah, that's the point. But yeah, I think I think ten nine is probably just at best a mix when I have a lot of ace in my range. I mean, listen, the EV of a bluff catcher should be very close to zero regardless of the bluff catcher on the river. Like all of these hands should be close yeah. to zero. Um, so by far the most important factor if you're playing against some weaker players is like, do we think the spot's over bluffed or under bluffed? Failing that, we have to accept that we are, for all our purposes, very, very close to indifferent. And if we're close to indifferent, it doesn't matter what we do. I decided to fold because I rolled low and I thought I, I just have a ton of ace on that node. And I've also got, I'm probably folding most hands like queens and kings on the turn because their blockers are really horrific for calling. So for that reason, yeah. And um, this spot is interesting as well. I think a lot of call here is fine. Raise is probably okay. Although, yeah, I'm not sure about raise in this situation. Multiple pots are a bit weird. I mean, I, I can't imagine raise is bad, right? I imagine this range is gonna be pretty strong on average. I'm just gonna check call again here. I don't see another option. Um, so king 9 7 we could build a betting range or we could check everything. I think building a betting range is okay. King king 5 is is very, very favourable in the sort of board we can range bet. Um, so this is this is an okay sizing for villain to use here because he is going to be betting quite a polarised range on a board like this. So I think this is right. Against this sizing we just want to pure call. This is good by villain. Um, queen 10 probably one of the few hands we could ever fold against this sizing. This is an interesting raise strategy from villain here. Um, we have to continue very wide against that, but probably not that holding. King Jack, no hearts. Clearly going to be a continue again here. Although it's getting close to chopping with value hands. Value maybe close to bluff catcher territory. I don't think it's quite a pure bluff catcher yet. And villain sizing of choice on this river should be jam. And jam will make our hand completely indifferent. Basically, we will now have a bluff catcher. He could also have a B75 range here with some hands like King Queen, King Jack, etc. This is a river card that people will probably not want to bluff very frequently intuitively. 
Um, so yeah, overbet here makes a ton of sense. He's basically just saying he has like sevens or nines or something like that. With a king here, we are like really quite high up our range. We are blocking like some value bets with the sizing, probably like king jack. We're also blocking like quite a lot of bluffs though with this card. The question I have to solve here is whether this hand disappear continue or not. I feel like I'm going to lose here a lot, but I feel like it's going to be at least a mixed call, if not a pure call. Probably a pure call against that sizing and a mixed call against uh, against a jam. That's kind of the difference at 200 at this time in the morning. Let's see if I face that line at 100 NL, I might just fold, honestly, because I feel like they're just not going to want to bluff that spot as a community, like, ever. You know what I mean? Like, the king pairs on the river. Like, how many people at 100 understand that they still need to bluff hands like that? How many people yeah. have 5-6 pre? I think it's really dicey. I think it's a really bad call at 100. Because I'm playing this game, I was just like, okay, I won't deviate, but I'm still not happy. Going to play polarized B75 strategy on this board. Normally, I would just play small bets blind versus blind. On this board, I think I can chain. This is not a good sizing for villain to pick. He should be, well, what size do you think he should be using on the flop there, Sam? When I check to him on his game through. Really not, big. Not a BC, right? Yeah, he's he's only really meant to be betting with like very thick value hands and, and bluffs, right? He's not meant to be doing anything else. So yeah, it's just, just getting very weird. Um, while I don't know what's going on here, I'm just going to call turn and fold the Ten of Diamonds River. A few too many things just completing on a card like that. So this hand is quite interesting. I don't I don't really know about this hand. There's another one we could maybe solve as it's not too bad for your computer, right? Being a cold call pot. So we open King Jack, check the flop, face a big bet. This is exactly what villain should be doing on this flop because what this comes down to is your value region. So when your value region contains lots of like vulnerable, weakish pairs that you want to be betting really often. Well, the fact that I almost folded is because it's really close actually, right? Like I just have a bluff catcher. You need to understand in that spot that my hand is not ever beating or chopping with any value hands at all. And therefore I literally have a bluff catcher. Yes, it's fairly average bluff catcher and it should maybe mix, I don't know, but like the Jack of Clubs is a very bad card to have that's blocking quite a few of Ellen's bluffs, right? So it's it's not, it's very important guys that when you're learning to get better at this game, that you don't just look at your hand as trips and be like, lol, can't fold trips. If poker was that easy, no offense, but you'd be really good at it already. And probably you're not, right? Because very few people are. I'm not even really good at it, in my opinion. I'm just like much better than most people. I, I agree with that. You shut up. So when I check here under the gun and villain bets the sizing, like this is a good sizing, right? This is like 200. Welcome to the stake where people know how to size their bets because the bottom of this value range here is something like King 10. It's something that's like a little bit worse or the same as my hand. Um, Real Gosco thoughts on villain's bluff with 5-6. It's absolutely perfect. Like completely mandatory. Like if he doesn't bluff that river, he's probably making a mistake. But so with King Jack here, we check call flop, we face another turn bet. On this turn, it's also very important to know that King Jack is now very near a bluff catcher. The reason I didn't quite call this a bluff catcher, and bluff catcher refers to a hand that beats no value hands and beats all bluffs or is like ahead of all bluffs, is that villain shouldn't be getting here with King Six. He shouldn't be getting here with Jacks and doing this, right? So the bottom of his value range is something like King Jack. The reason I didn't say this is a bluff catcher is that I think I can chop with King Jack. And if I think I can chop with King Jack, I'm going to call this hand a value beater. That might sound misleading, but value beater just means any hand that, when you're facing a bet, can chop or better with one or more combos of villain's value betting range. Imagine villain's range is this dichotomy, this like value and bluffs. So turn bet really good by villain, probably close to full frequency, I would think. Unblocking our folding range here heavily, which is stuff like tens, nines, queens. King X though, I think is a bit too good to fold at this point, um, blocker wise. Call the King River, it looks good. It's like, oh yeah, we made trips. Like, But like, Villain doesn't have pocket aces. I'm not moving ahead of any of his value bets when I hit this river, right? I, mean, I still have a bluff catcher. So when you sit there and you go, oh my God, you almost folded trips. You're not thinking about poker in the right way. You need to think about relative hand strength based on the action and based on the run out and based on the preflop composition, the positions. So when you get here and you face this bet on the river and it's an over bet, you do not even chop with a value combo now. Villain cannot pick King Jack for the sizing if he's remotely competent, because if he does that, he's just losing most of the time when called. So this set, this bet, this is a bluff catcher. It's a hand that only beats a bluff 
I will never win here if Villain is value betting. I will never chop here if Villain is value betting. So when I make this call, I'm actually happy to fold this on a different role because I, I feel like I'm totally indifferent here. I feel like I don't have a reason to suspect that this is either winning or losing. I do block Jack-10 of clubs, which I don't like. I do block Queen-Jack of clubs, which I really don't like. I don't block King-Jack. I, I don't block any value hand with the Jack because he's not value betting anything with a Jack in it. And in terms of the King, I don't even think he's value betting many hands with a King in it for the sizing. So actually this bluff catcher is not that great. I think I'd rather have Ace-9 here. I think Ace-9 is a much better call than King-Jack. Even though it's a worse hand, it's a better call because a very big part of villain's value range is pocket nines. Think of the preflops um, action. Right? Not King Queen, not Ace King, he doesn't have that pre, cold called the button. So if you would fold Ace 9 here but call King Jack, you're doing it backwards. And if you want to look at me, you know, almost holding King Jack and being like, what a net? Actually, no, not at all. I'm just contemplating folding a bluff catcher. That's all it is. But you've got to make that first step, guys. You've got to say this is a bluff catcher. Once you know that, there's no lure of this hand. There's no meaning to the fact that you have trip kings. The only world in which you're like fist pumping is if a, he's not a competent player, yeah. and B, he is thus, like, barreling off King-10. Yeah, exactly. If he doesn't understand range versus range, because he too is drawn into, like, the trap of, like, oh, my hand looks good, it's trips, and he's looking at, like, the hand ranking on the card that you get in the deck of playing cards that lists all the hand rankings. If that's your level, you will probably think King-10 is a really good hand here. And if that's my opponent's level, I want to call this hand, because I might chop or win against value, and he might still be bluffing. Right? But you are very careful here. If I if I face this hand at 50 NL, this is a fold. There's no way I even break even. Because people are going to check back 5-6 because they don't like bluffing on the king. Even though 5-6 is a great bluff. Blocks zero of my folding combos. So when he has 6-5 here, he should absolutely make this bluff because he unblocks all heart-heart combos. He unblocks all jack-10 combos, which are all automatic folds. And therefore, this is there's no better hand in his range to bluff with here than the 5-6 of spades. I think it's debatable whether I should call the river. Apart from yeah, that, I think Yeah, but you RNG'd it's... it and you rolled like a knight. Yeah, king. but is it just a fold? Is there well, any call? Um, yeah, there'll be call. Come on. There has to be, right? Because otherwise yeah, I'm folding my like whole range. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but is there any call in reality against humans? Are humans going to follow through enough? Maybe. Well, we're playing 200 now. True. That's the difference, right? Yeah, there's, there's Kags actually steps in and says, I think Lojack versus Button is a fold. Like, I think it's a mix. I don't think it's a pure call. I don't even know if I like the call. I felt sick as I was making it, which probably tells me <laughs> I don't want to make it. Like, the thing is, if people are going to not call enough of these weird hands, and they're going to 3-bet their Jack-10, and they're going to 3-bet their 5-6, they're just going to have 9s and 7s. I'm just going to die on the river when I call, right? That's another argument. I, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe fucking full river is good. But yeah, guys, try to think about your relative hand strength, never your absolute hand strength, right? Pitching this at chat, right? You're not 200 regs, probably, right? You're not expected to know the exact equilibrium of the spot, but do know when your hand is a bluff catcher and when it's a bit more than a bluff catcher. Bluff catcher just means it's only beating bluffs, right? It doesn't make it a fold, that just makes it... King-Queen is a value catcher, I mean, maybe, yeah, like maybe he can overbet King-Queen here, but I think it's like, I don't think everyone will. I think King-Queen is like a call and King-Jack is definitely like at least a mix fold. I guess he's meant to have King-Queen here, sure. But another argument could be that a set might overbet the turn. But then again, if he's properly balanced here, all that means is that our hand is a better bluff catcher now because we block more King Queen, which is now a bigger part of his value range. I don't know, it's an interesting spot. So guys, the Carrot Poker School is currently enrolling. If you like what you see here, you like this analysis, you like the way I teach the game, do check it out. We're taking on students into three different grades from October 11th onwards. So it'll be 10 week courses that are very interactive and totally um, great opportunities for you to meet other poker peers of your level to do a bunch of like solid work to get feedback from me and to participate in 10 1.5 hour long interactive lectures. Sam's about to finish grade one and he's been enjoying it so far and we've had a lot of other students um, just loving this thinking it's the best way to learn theory and to just take your game to the next level. It will straighten out all of the kinks in your game, it will iron out all the creases, it will basically straighten out your understanding of the logic of the bare bones of the game. Um, and that, I don't mean simplistic bare bones, I mean like the more complex little weird bones in the hands that no one knows the names of as well. Okay, so on 664, if we face the small bet here, which I think is like, 
it's something you should be more selective with here. I think we are going to mix quite a lot of rays with this hand. Especially if he's range betting, but even if he's not range betting, I think we want to mix quite a bit of rays with this hand. So some sizing like this is probably fine. We could also go a little bit smaller. It's about 4x, isn't it? Okay, so this is the sort of spot I've just been teaching my grade 2 class, actually. So when this turn comes, one thing that we can actually do here is bet small with everything. Um, and the reason that we can do that is that this hand will actually start to function like a value hybrid bluff protection bet, like Villain could fold eight, no club here. In theory, Villain could call with the ace of clubs in his hand, and he could also just do other stuff as well. So on this river, this is actually much, much better for him now because he has all these offsuit cards. So this is our choice is now between block or I'm gonna check the ace king. Actually, I think it's just best against this player block or check. Um, I'm actually going to check here. He has way more flushes now. These four flush runouts are really bad for us. We want a very low betting frequency on the river here in general when this sort of card comes. Would be the same if this card had come on the turn as well. I'm going to have one third the ace king. This is kind of like a pseudo value bet of sorts. How many bets really big here? Like, this is an okay bluff catcher for sure. But it's not fantastic. And the question is are people finding the bluffs they need to find here and what would those hands actually be so they would be things like pairs right to have to be bluffing with like tens or something or fives or something like that in this spot which he might be doing but i don't actually this is a spot where i'm actually happy exploiting even a 200 pool because i think it's just so hard for humans to bluff there when they have so many big clubs in their range i think it's just very very hard after two filterings double filtering there being calling two bets for them to bluff off and enough on that river so that hand's super interesting what we need to understand is that on the turn, it's fantastic for us. Like, the three flush turn is really, really good for the check raiser. But the fourth club is awful for us. It's, like, fantastic for the for the other guy, for the free flop raiser. So, fascinating spot. Yeah, and also because he has to defend the check raise with, like, a lot of overcards and stuff. Yeah, and then he's got to call the turn as well, um, and it, or he's got to turn like pocket jacks into a bluff on the river or something like that. I just don't know if it's happening. So this guy three X's and then four bets. I'm just gonna fold jack ten. I don't think I can. I can really mind this. This might be mixed call and equilibrium. I don't think the bluffs are there for Villa really here in this spot. Really wanted to gamble. You just there. want the action, man. You're just like an action I do, drinker, uh, Yeah, I'm actually thinking to myself, I'm gonna play some nice today. You've been inspired by the character poker stream. That's what we want. So this sizing is clearly a weaker player, right? So here's an exploit, Sam, right? Okay, obviously with this happening, um, we wouldn't be doing anything anyway, but you want to hang around, don't you? Yeah, it's having yeah, a Yeah, but I would, I would have folded there anyway, just because that bigger three bet, I just don't want to mix any four bet with ace-queen against that. Ace-queen here, we still have some pot shares, so we're obviously checking. And the solved ranges are available at my website if you're wondering how Sam and myself are after the hand checking what we should have done pre we're doing that with the carrot poker solved ranges we're not using these while we're playing it's not something that i i agree with anymore ethically but we are encouraging people to buy these so that they can study out of game cross-reference what they did past tense did with the ranges and just basically develop a better feel for preflop What a flop. Yeah, I mean, let's not get too excited. We've just got a draw. Why wouldn't you just get excited? We've just got a draw in it. We're gonna open threes in the table. the draw. It's the draw. Uh, so we did three bet here, right? So I think we can bet or check here. I don't really see why it would matter. Let's roll 41. Okay, let's bet. I don't mind. Bet's That's fine. Good. Check's fine. Ho ho ho! <laughs> Straight flush barber. Let's do it geometrically. Let's focus in on our straight flush here. What carrot do I have? A goddamn carrot covering the straight flush. Let's get rid of that. Have it. Have it. Uh, the nine is so much better than the ace as well. We folded. Oh, what? Okay, Jack, 10, 5, two-tone, and we three bet. No, we ISO'd pre. What's our sizing gonna be? I'm gonna use like a half pot-ish sizing in this spot. Like normally I would use B75, right, on this texture, 
but because we're multi-way, I'm just going to use the sizing. Because I, everything is a bit thinner in this situation. Slight overbet is fine here. Pot's fine here. I think slight overbet of this SBR is probably the right sizing. I'm going to use this. I have this tool in my inventory for when a normal sized overbet of B150 would be a bit too much. Yeah. But let's see if we don't, let's see if we can fade running into the quad tens here. They're just folding the river today, so what can I do? It's queen nine, which is going to be a range here. Uh, rolling 80 here, so we're certainly going to bluff with jacks. Does he have jack 10 in his range here? Like sometimes maybe? We just choose a slight overbet here again. Yeah, I think slight overbet's fine. The bluff you want to find, right? If you're not bluffing jacks there, like what the fuck are you bluffing? You don't want to be just like bluffing nothing there. So guys, Carrot Poker School in rolling October 11th, running for 10 weeks. Do sign up, you will be able to choose between three courses. If you're not sure which course is right for you, feel free to just chat to me about it here. Um, or alternatively, add me on Skype as characters, same as my PokerStar screen name, and we can talk about what grade would be right for you. Don't let uncertainty about which course to do ruin your chance of getting a formal, rigorous academic poker education. Picking up the kings. Yeah, so we're going to make, so ace four here, we three bet, we get this flop. We're going to be C betting quite a lot on this flop. I might even be like range C betting on this flop against this position. Do I want to range C bet? Probably not. Is there a bit of check with this hand? Probably. Let's use it this time. Um, do I just call here? I think I just call here. I really want the other guy to come along. I'm just going to cold call against these two sack sizes. Just going to cold call. Now I can save money as well. This is great. Hopefully. Maybe. Probably not. Maybe. Uh, okay, let's call. Back to here. Do we want some bluff with this hand? I actually don't think this combo ever wants the bluff in this configuration. It's a really bad card for a range and it's awful. Unfavorable spot. Don't want to bluff random stuff. Calling kings. Checking. Facing a bet. Folding. Multitasking. Another two BBs incoming. Yeah, we'll call another four BBs. He's probably got an ace here about 75% of the time. May have jacks or something though, or queens. If he shoves wherever we fold. Yeah, I mean... I mean, like, do we ever win? Ever? He cold 4-bet, right? No, he cold... No, he 3-bet. Does he have, like, queens or something sometimes? Like... I'm actually just gonna fold. I just don't see why anyone is ever betting without, like, ever bluffing there or betting, like, sub ace X there for that sizing. It just feels like it's... it's 5 out of 6 times or 6 out of 7 times we're losing and that's not good enough. We do need to win about... 19, 20% of the time or something. I don't think we do. Let's get the fucking three bet pot going, boys. Is this the coolest avatar you've ever seen? From Belvedia? This is very cool. It looks a bit like a Khajiit. You play the Elder Scrolls games? A what? Like, okay, the Elder Scrolls games are like kind of open world RPGs. And one of the races in those is called Khajiit, and it's like a half cat, half man kind of thing. Me. Yeah, you're a bit khajiit -y. And they, they speak in the third person, so they say, Khajiit has no time for you. They speak like that. And then there's these Argonians that speak like in the, like, not just the third person, but like the distant, removed, hypothetical tense they speak in, and they're like, The prey approaches. Like when you come near them and stuff. It's great. Timing down here without meaning to. Uh, yeah, so turn is going to be a mixture of different things. I wonder if I ever raise. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this spot, boys. I think cold call is superior to 3 bet here at the stack depth. Fold ace jack. Come, this is a mix, I'm pretty sure. That said, against this range, against this stack, this might be a little tighter. Oof! Eesht. A7, probably never against UTG. I can probably get close to betting range here. My range is really strong. I'm just gonna one third range. I have a lot of pocket pair here and not much other stuff. It's a shame we couldn't dunk. I know! I would have donked in position had it been legal. Mm. 
is a very, very good spot for a range. That said, Villain probably does get to raise some overpair here, less so at the stack dip, though he's in a really bad situation here with a lot of his range against this bet. This is just like all my EV here, like this spot belongs to me most of the time. Range versus range, like my range has way more EV than his range in this spot. When you think about it, I call call pre and then call, then call a squeeze, right? So I'm going to be doing very, very well. This guy is tanking so hard. He's tanking so hard against third pot. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Does finally fold. It's a very awkward spot to play, isn't it? Like, you can think of all kinds of hands in villain's range there against my preflop action. They're just horrific to play against. That's why I want to bet range, because the spot is just insanely good for my range and not very good for his. So clearly we have a massive range advantage. And when you have a massive range advantage, you don't need to check a single combo, because your fold equity is way above the average for that, for the sizing that you're using. All right, trick fives, uh, let's check. Let's check close to range on this board out position. Back, I got this fucking locked up, boys. Gonna, gonna call the Gotham now. <laughs> you want the Gotham Kyra on already? Okay. What are we doing here? Check. Locking in, yeah, check. Two hands at once. Going to usually bet the sun. This, with, with the ace here, we do some check again here for sure. Ace of clubs though is not such a relevant blocker, so I will actually over a bit here. I think check is okay. Very good turn for Villain. He should probably be close to blocking range here, just like betting everything for a small sizing here. I don't think he should be using this bet in the easiest fold in the world against that sizing. That was misplay, I think, by Villain. I think he should just be like, right. I mean, he can do that. It's not a misplay, that's a bit harsh, but I think he can just be like using third with everything in a spot where his range advantage is massive and ranges are, his range is really quite merged on that card as well. So yeah, it's an interesting spot. It's a grade two topic. We have a lecture about how to play the turn after check raising flop in grade two. It's basically all about that. And it's a very misplayed spot um, with which people are not very familiar and it definitely gets butchered a fair amount. So it's an interesting part of the course for sure. So before we wrap up guys, the Carrot Poker School is doing its autumn intake. We are taking on a bunch of students, a class full of like 10 to 15 students, which we still need to fill up, right? So we've got loads of places left on the 11th of October. Classes will start that week. We will agree a time slot that's right for you. If you can't make it, we'll refund your deposit, but that never happens. And we'll be kicking off the autumn intake of the Carrot Poker School from the 11th of October. So do sign up, you'll be done before Christmas. And then you can do another one in the new year as well, so win-win. Another thing I would say, as well as fully recommending it, is that watching, I felt a lot more confident in my thoughts. Watching. Right. Like, I, like I've, when, I've like, noticed the, that, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask like whether you noticed that. I mean, it's, it's like, it's a small thing because it's still early days in studying all this stuff. But like, when you were talking about, like when you had the nines and you rolled a 13, you're like, I don't think this is a bet here. Like, I know in that spot, our strategy now is to overbet, right? Yep. Um, and and I know from looking at Sims now and knowing that spot, like, the betting frequency is really low as well. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that is... Because is we're blocking a calling range and we're unblocking bluff and value betting ranges. Yeah. yeah. So it's tough. But before, you might have looked at that and been like, why no value bet nines, right? Like, that would be the yeah, natural yeah. instinct before. So, yeah, character yeah. skill really does advance your understanding of the game tree of common spots, of some slightly rarer spots, and you know, if you don't know what grade to do, just just message me, just add me on Skype as characters, or email me. We would love to fill up these places as soon as possible so that we know they're going to be full, so don't hesitate. If you are thinking about taking a course, do sign up this week. Guarantee yourself a space. Or email me for more information at admin at carrotcorner.com, Skype me as characters, PM me on Twitch, whatever you want to do. I don't mind, guys, however you want to get in touch, if you want a 10-minute call, where I set you some some poker problems and see how you get on with them, engage your level, and thus tell you which course to do. We'll do that too. And we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow evening. See you then, guys. Bye for now. Bye.